I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is Luke Hill, also from Kit Guru. Computex has just finished, and we're going to have a quick discussion about the things that have caught our attention in the past week. During the uh, AMD announcements, Press there was conference. something interesting from Dell, and those are not words you often get to put in the same sentence. What was the interesting thing from Dell? Well, they've got uh, an XPS based all in one PC which is powered by Ryzen, and not any Ryzen, Ryzen 7 1700X, eight cores, up to RX 580 graphics, inside an all-in-one PC. So that's mighty impressive. An iMac-esque thing. Let's not give Apple any credit here. This is good oh, okay. engineering by Dell. <laughs> you could say an iMac-esque thing, but I, did I say, think that- I, I did say an iMac-esque well, thing. Well done, well done, triggered, I guess. Thank you. But, I think the highest core count iMac is like the four core. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. It's, pick, yeah, it's piece, like a four core mainstream Intel model, isn't it? So eight cores, well, Ryzen 7 1700 inside an all in one well, PC. That's a new level of performance well, for an all in one, as far as I know. And, and I say an all in one, a widespread all in one, because we've seen some boutique system builders mm. in the US. I think Digital Storm, I think, put. Uh, Kind of a really high-end oh. system in the back of an ultra-wide <laughs> monitor, yeah, which was but, impressive. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but last year in the 101, Gigabyte had a thing which was a television which had a visa mounts on the back and had a PC. I mean, you know, depending on how you want to define the thing, from the front it's a, it's a screen, go around the side and there's this thing hanging there. And it's a, I mean, as long as it's quiet, it doesn't really mm. matter. I mean, if you want to wall mount it, bit of a problem. But uh, yeah, when I mean, you're looking at a screen, but yeah, this was an iMac-esque, just just to give yes. an idea to, yes. the, to the lovely yeah. viewer. Yeah, what so I'm talking it, it was about, it yeah? was a premium model. I think it was oh. a 27-inch yeah. screen, if I remember correctly. And I, and I recall from the side, it was a bit fat, or deep, uh, deep. Yeah, I mean, I mean considering there's a lot of hardware back. in yeah. there. I mean, well, it was certainly slimmer than a monitor plus another system yeah, on your yeah, desk. No, 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 I'm not so, knocking it. Again, no. I'm giving the viewer the, com uh, the yes, idea here. Yes. So it's a screen and built into the back of the screen, there's a proper computer and it's got some depth to it because there's quite a lot of hardware in there. Yeah, um, so it's Ryzen a, 7 1700, yeah, I think 32 yeah, gigs of memory yeah, up to RX 580, yeah. although that may be in a power throttle situation. It was a bit oh, well, inconclusive. Time, time will tell and all yeah, the rest so of it. But, uh, a yeah, high so, performance storage, of course. Yeah. So. And the, the very fact that it's going to be here on your desk in front of you means it has to be quite quiet, otherwise it'd be just mind-numbingly terrible. So you have to assume they've got their chops in line there. Yeah. Fingers crossed. You, you, you would but hope. Right? You Ryzen would hope. 7 so, is yeah. quite a, the 1700 is a good one to pick yeah, for that because it's got 65 yeah. watt TDP, yeah. really good thermal solution. So mm. it's still impressive. They've done a good job by the looks of it. Um, time will tell. So when the reviews start coming in, then we'll know. But it looks, it's, it, it, it's impressive. It's mm. exciting to see what these vendors are doing with Ryzen and giving more cores and more performance in an area where previously that wasn't really possible other than the slight incremental upgrades each year. True. Dell have, of course, done the 8-core Ryzen 7 1700 inside an all-in-one PC. So not to be outdone, of course, Asus have put it inside a laptop. Yes. So you've got an 8-core Ryzen 7 1700 inside a laptop. And this is, I believe, as far as CPU horsepower goes, uh, the world's fastest laptop outside of very... Ex they said it was the world's fastest laptop in terms of CPU horsepower because they hit a Cinebench score of... I think 1410 or 1401, which is which, impressive. That, that is impressive. That is very impressive. That is impressive. If you buy a laptop based on Cinebench, you'll be happy. I'm not quite clear who that might be. Well, but, Cinebench, yeah. it, it transfers quite well to real world situation. Mm. If you can feed those cores, Cinebench yeah. is generally a pretty good indicator of rendering type performance. So that is impressive that they mm. put in a laptop. It wasn't a thin and light by any stretch. No, no, no. no the no, cooling no. solution, no. the thickness, thick it was quite, yes, quite large. Stuff. A Huge. thick and fat. Yes, yes, yes. thick but, and fat. Uh, uh, t TM me. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> I'll give you that one. substantial. Eight cores, impressive. Yeah, I think they've got a good GPU, uh, plenty of memory. So it looks pretty good. I think actually they, they've they included a lot of AMD technologies in this laptop. So I think it's FreeSync 2.0, mm. um, AMD graphics, mm. AMD Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, so enough about that. Looks though. impressive. Hey Luke, here's a thing. Have you seen anything in Mini ITX that you like the look of this week? Oh, why, Leo? Thanks for asking. Yes, yes, we have. Bro, I just saw my heart rate <laughs> climb significantly. So, ASRock have done it again by the looks of it. So we had. Let, 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 let's just tee this up. Up to the moment, what is your favourite motherboard in the whole wide world? Pretty much ever. Well, of course, I'm I'm objective. Yes, yes, I'm yes, biased. Yes, I don't yes. really care for vendor for motherboard, no. but 
I'd say the best feat of engineering motherboard that I've worked with in a long, long time was ASRock's Mini ITX, the X99E uh, ITX-AC. So that was, if I had to pick a favorite, or yes, the, one I, the one I liked working with the yes. most, the one I was most impressed by the engineering yeah. and the, the, the know-how and the knowledge that went behind it would have to be ASRock's Mini yeah. ITX motherboard. Uh, I and the two the restrictions, two, two memory modules and the slightly peculiar ILM uh, yeah, cooling so mount. It, right. it wasn't without drawbacks. Like you say, it's tiny, to, I mean, it's, that, it's 170 mil by 170 it was, mil. It was tiny. It was, um, yes. what have you seen this week? Well, we've seen an X299 version. So the X299E-ITX, and this had a lot of people, myself included, very, very excited. Mm. And they have addressed some of the caveats with the X99 model. How so, many memory modules? So you've got four memory modules. How and have they done that? The way they've done that is they've, instead of using full-size DIMM slots, they've used SODIMM slots, yep. which you think, uh-oh, SODIMM, no, no, no. G-Skill will be selling you, if you want it, 3466 speed SODIMM memory. In SODIMM. So, in SODIMM form, in SODIMM form. So you can pile 32 gigs of really just, high speed memory just to, in if just you to want. Plug it, just to plug in here to calm the enthusiasm, just in case you're not aware, I'm sure you are, SODIMM laptop memory, okay? Much smaller. Very small and compared to this. Therefore, traditionally, much slower because laptops don't need really fast memory. And it, uh, so this is, uh, not that I can imagine anyone putting the fast memory in a laptop itself. I mean, maybe. But there's some. G-Scale showed it off with yeah, the EVGA yeah, laptop. But, but it's possible, possibly. it's possible. But for this platform, yeah. Hey, I didn't check actually the uh, cooler mounts for this mini ITX. Is this also ILM or is this conventional? Completely conventional socket. So, so they've addressed the two main problems and they've built on it more. So perfectly good socket, quad channel memory with high speed support. If we were wearing Kit Guru hats, ASRock, we would take them off and doff them. This is looking like properly good news. Yes. Very, very, so we'll, please, please, let's just hope it works correctly. We'll, we'll have to please. wait to see how it performs. Uh, the <laughs> The disappointment would be colossal. Oh, it's a tear. It would be yes, a tear. yes, indeed. Okay. It, it, it's impressive, though. Got, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I need to talk for a, a fraction more about this. They've got triple M.2 slots, so you can stick a bunch of M.2 yep. SSDs in this. So they've got one in the front and a vertical mounting orientation, right. two on the back. Okay. They've come up with a very unique way of mounting the SATA ports and the internal USB 3 ports. So because there just simply isn't enough room with the large no, socket no. And, the, and the four DIMM slots, they've mounted a riser card vertically above the VRM, so the MOSFET modules. So you've got the I MOSFET heatsink okay. and there's a riser card branched out with the upwards facing SATA ports and the upwards facing internal USB 3 connector. Okay. So when you can't expand width or length, you go vertical, right. why not? Where's the power connector for the motherboard? Is the power connector is else? somewhere on the board. Right, yes. fine. And, okay. and and mini course, ITX, it can pretty much go anywhere. Yeah, it, it doesn't right, seem okay. to be much convention, right. but it looks yeah. very, very impressive. I, I'm not sure if we'll see this at launch because it just, I would imagine they still have a lot of work to do to make sure everything works because the new platform, getting everything to work for a new platform mm. is tough. Yep. Getting everything to work with Mini ITX and Sodium for a new platform is uh, very tough. And, and the final thing on Mini ITX, I'm fairly confident we will not see Threadripper in Mini ITX because there'll be a CPU socket I think and the, just nothing else. The, the Threadripper is in itself Mini ITX. Yes, the, yes, absolutely. And that's just the socket. Yes. So yeah, I do quite. not think we'll see Threadripper uh, in Mini oh, ITX yeah. anytime soon. But it's uh, great. ASRock have opened up again a, new, a completely yeah. new yes. level of performance for Mini ITX enthusiasts. Yes. Yes. Good. Excited. ASRock. Properly good. Well done. Um, NVIDIA Max-Q. Now then, this is, a, this is an evolving story. And even though we're in the final day of Computex and we're having this discussion now and we've met a bunch of people, I don't think as yet the full story has come out here. So this is going to be a, this is how it currently seems. So you attended the NVIDIA briefing. You listened to things about cars, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Yeah. So I now and feel like a very, other stuff. very knowledgeable in AI and robots. Yep. Yep. Graphics cards, however. What have you heard? What was what the NVIDIA take on Max-Q? What is Max-Q? Well, it seems to be, um, at first, I actually thought it was NVIDIA directives. So yes. They were telling the vendors how to tweak the GPU silicon in order to achieve better balance of 
power and performance and then enable that to obviously use a smaller cooler solution for a thin and light laptop. So how to build a thin and light laptop with proper gaming graphics power and logically therefore a proper CPU yes. because the one without the other is fairly pointless mm -hmm. and thanks to the magic sprinkly fairy dust of Nvidia it's cool and quiet and brilliant and everything is good in the mm -hmm. garden and you probably get good battery life as well. Yeah. However, Did they actually explain how this was achieved? I think they probably did, but I had maybe phased out by then. Right. I think my brain was on overload from robots right. and cars and AI. Right. Um, but it actually seems that this is a new GPU in some senses mm. that they've been in. Uh, for example, a GTX 1080 to sit more appropriately on the voltage and frequency curve. So I do mm. think they are dropping the voltage level um, to a level that is better balanced for performance with lower and power. And therefore, we would assume a lower clock speed. You would assume. Uh, if not, good job. Well, if if uh, if it's the GTX 1080 that can run on lower power and deliver GTX 1080 performance with no changes, well, what's not to like? Thank you. Right, absolutely. Well, we, we all want one. Thank you. Um, if, on the other hand, it's a GTX 1080 that's running at lower speed and therefore is cooler, well, we understand the concept, but do we call that a GTX 1080? It, it, it may get confusing, depending on how the vendors implement this. Here we have a GTX 1080. Here we have a different GTX 1080. They run at different speeds and different powers, but both called GTX. Yes, that's confusing. Yeah. So, well, the TDP is different. Yes. So there is clearly a difference. TDP is actually so, in GTX 1070 territory, isn't it? It's Yeah, it's more towards T GTX right. 1070. So this could be a drop-in solution for some laptop vendors. So a laptop manufacturer who, have, who can currently deal with the GTX 1070 are able up. with this to put a GTX 1080 and Max I'm going to do one moment Sorry. able to put a GTX 1080 in the same chassis and they can sell it as a GTX 1080 Max Q kind the, of ki kind of, kind they, of. They, they can describe it yeah. uh, as a Max Q yeah. I d haven't seen anything that says there's going to be a specific model name but no. I may be wrong no indeed uh, so at the moment the way it's looking is that we're really confused Yes, I mean, it's looking like NVIDIA is really pushing forward with the balance of performance and power, which is good. It's especially good for laptops. Jensen mm. showed on stage um, the Asus, the new ROG laptop, which was very thin, very light, looked mm. very comfortable. And that was running uh, a game, the racing game, in real time without, obviously, a power mm. cord. So this is great. However, well, I do hope there's clarity between the two different the solutions. The fundamental question is, if you take a laptop from a manufacturer who currently uses a GTX 1080 and then you take this Max-Q and you put it next to it, do the two things perform the same or not? That's the question. You'd think it was unlikely. Uh, at the moment, it's sounding to me as though the, uh, the Max-Q is going to be, well, hopefully better than 1070, but less than 1080. So, frankly, on this one, time will tell. But the initial, they've done what? thing which sounded well how did they do that yes and the answer would appear to be all gtx 1080s are not necessarily equal that's the closest i've got to a current answer yeah and until i see the thing running i know no more than this yeah so it looks like they've binned it well so let's hope that is the case uh time will tell i'm leo Walder for kit guru Lou kilt kit guru if you like this video thumbs up if you don't thumbs down if you want more from kit guru click to subscribe